Hello, I'm Jason Rankin, and welcome to the Grass Check Podcast, brought to you by AgriSearch and Daphne. We are bringing you the latest information, insights, and opinion to improve grazing management on your farm. This week, we are taking a deeper delve into the science of grassland management. I'm joined by Debbie McConnell and Francis Lively from AFBE to discuss the latest information from the grass check plots and farms. We'll also be talking about the value of grass for dairy and beef production. Debbie and Francis, thank you for joining us. Last week, the grass growth model predicted a leveling off of the grass growth. Did this occur? Hi, Jason. So, yeah, this week growth is up slightly. So our grass check plots are averaging 70.8 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day. Dairy farms across the province are averaging 73 and beef and sheep farms are averaging 64.5. Overall, all the plots, the dairy farms and the beef and sheep farms are all up about 10 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day. That's slightly above the forecast and where we're predicting, but we've seen a little bit more rain fall that was in comparison to what had been originally forecast. So that's why the growth is up a bit. However, if you look at where we are in the grass growth curve, we're still about 15 to 20 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day down on where we'd expect to be for this time of year. And if grass growth doesn't lift, we will see quite a fall in the total amount of grass being produced in the month of May if we don't get that jump. In the last two weeks, we had noticed an east-west divide in grass growth, Fermanagh having the highest growth of all the counties. Is this the case this week? So we're still seeing a fairly good uh, east-west divide evident there. So uh, this week, Fermanagh is averaging 86 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. And in comparison in the east, um, Antrim's averaging 61 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. Um, so we are seeing that east-west divide. And where that's really cropping up is actually um, in terms of soil moisture. So last week, our soil moistures across the board were staying below 60 centibars. And, and 60 is a level around which we would, once we go above that, we would expect um, uh, drought conditions to start to come into play and we'll see some restriction in grass growth. This week we're seeing County Down, County Antrim and County Armagh all sitting above that 60 Um, and so going forward we're likely to continue to see that east-west split where we have lower growth in the east and and the western counties are actually still um, producing quite high growth rates um, across the board. So what growth are you forecasting for the coming two weeks? Um, so looking forward, um, we're seeing growth rates in the seven-day forecast of 67.1 kilograms of dry matter per hectare and in the 14-day forecast of 71.3 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. That is very dependent on rainfall at the moment. Um, they are lower than what we would expect at this time of the year, but those drier conditions are pulling the forecast back. If we are in the west of the province, it's likely that you'll see growth higher than that because soil moisture levels there are still quite quite good um, and supporting good growth. If you're in the east, you might be under a bit more restriction um, with those grass growth forecasts. Also, the fact that it has been a little bit cooler and there hasn't been as much sunshine this last week, um, 10 days, uh, is is contributing to that slightly lower growth and that lower grass growth forecast going forward. So what aspects of grassland management should farmers be focusing on this week and how does that change for farmers in different parts of Northern Ireland? So we'll come to you, Debbie, first with regard to dairy farms. Um, so, Jason, just looking actually at the dairy farm figures that we see from across Northern Ireland, there's absolutely huge variation in growth rates. So the lowest farms, and particularly in the drier farms, um, is averaging, I think, 23 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day. On the opposite hand, we have got farms that are registering 110 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day. Putting that into context, if you have a 23 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day growth rate, that's a 65 day rotation. So it's 65 days before you're back in that paddock again and have enough grass to graze. On the opposite end of the spectrum, that 110 grass growth rate is giving you a 14 day rotation. So grass is moving at very different rates um, on individual farms. So I think one of the things that we need to be doing now is getting out and measuring grass growth and really keeping an eye on paddocks. This is the most, this is the most volatile 
volatile time of the year in terms of grass growth rates. We can see them change quite quickly within the space of a few days. So we can very quickly go from a surplus to a deficit of grass. So getting out there and measuring uh, paddocks is a really important thing. On those farms where we are seeing very strong growth rates, what we've also noticed is average farm covers creeping up to 28, 2900. So we are in a surplus of grass on those farms. Excellent time to now be considering actually what paddocks can I take out, get cut, cut out, put in the clamp, make good quality silage from them and get them back into the rotation because as I say, average farm covers are sitting high. So there's opportunity to take that grass off rather than try and graze it when it's too strong and end up with poor utilisation. Thank you, Debbie. So Francis, for beef farmers, what should they be thinking of over the next week or two? Obviously, on the beef and sheep side, things are slightly different. Jason, particularly on suckler, suckler farms and sheep farms, where actually the number of animals on the farm has been increasing in weekly with lambing and calving. So the demand for grass has obviously increased. So really, that's putting more pressure on it. And really, as a consequence, the demand is, is actually is getting higher as lambs and calves get bigger on a weekly basis. With this, the, the below average growth that we saw so far this year, th this is making it quite challenging. And we can see lower covers on, on beef and sheep farms. And you can obviously see the lower covers uh, and actually lower, lo lower, lower growth rate than what we're seeing on, on dairy farms could be attributed to this year with the, with the lower cover and then a longer period for the, for the grass to, to basically regrow. So it is, it is a challenge, albeit on farms on more marginal or for damper conditions. There is actually an opportunity with this dry weather to really maximise utilisation and it covers the slightly lower covers than what you would normally. So very often in, in beef and sheep farms, it is, it is difficult to get down to the, to the residuals that you would really like. But in this sort of conditions, you can really graze, graze down hard uh, provided you, you, you don't go too extreme to lower the intake to then have a knock-on effect on performance. But certainly going forward, we would like to see ha higher growth. I think really to, to push the growth, we're going to have to really keep fertilizer going out onto land to really try to maximize any any rain that does come and to, and to maximize growth. Obviously on the beef and sheep side, and certainly in, in the West, it is an excellent opportunity in, in this weather to really take extra grass and grow extra grass at the moment with the conditions that, that they've got. So there's a bit of a difference in, in the east-west side, but there, there is excellent opportunities in, in the West to maximise grass production. The east, obviously, we are start, in some form starting to get into uh, difficulties where there's been that little moisture and, and the grazing demand with the numbers of stock on the farm actually increasing and getting to, to, to peaks, it is difficult. And in some cases, you know, cattle are having to be substituted with, for, with additional forage or, or concentrate in, in some cases. Thank you, Francis. Grass quality has been excellent over the last few weeks. Has quality held up this week? So, uh, Jason, yeah, looking at grass quality this week, we're still in very, very strong conditions in terms of grass quality. Um, dry matter contents averaging 22.4, ME sitting at 12.2, crude protein sitting at 16.2. So grass quality remaining fairly strong. Looking forward uh, to next week, there's early indications that some of the quality might be starting to fall a little bit. That was we would typically expect at this time of year as just plants start to reach that heading phase or getting a little bit more mature. Also, as we're seeing heavier farm covers come into play and as well on farms that are starting to suffer a little bit of drought stress, sometimes that can trigger a drop in quality as well. But I think when we look at quality, the most important thing that's having a, a factor on, and Francis has already alluded to it, is that dry matter contents are sitting up high and they're sitting strong. So there's a really good opportunity there to get good levels of intake. Um, so at the minute, I mean, dry matter, we can probably say quite confidently it'll be sitting in um, close to 20% um, for next for next week if the current weather conditions hold. That means actually when we put that into context, we've got a really good opportunity for high dry matter intakes there. So for example, if you took grass at 20% dry matter and we're trying to get 15 kilograms of dry matter intake into a cow in a day, she only has to actually eat 75 kilograms of fresh weight to achieve that dry matter intake. If dry matter itself then falls to 15%, a cow has to eat 100 kilograms of fresh weight just to get exactly the same level of dry matter intake. So 
it's purely the fact that dry, my, dry matter levels are quite high in crops at the minute means that cows can be more efficient with grazing. It requires less grazing time. It requires less chewing. There's less volume of grass to eat, less water to process as a whole. Then um, cows should be able to achieve high levels of performance simply through the fact that dry matter content is good. You've introduced a new component to the grass check bulletin this week on the value of grass. Would you like to explain the rationale behind that? Yeah, so we've introduced this new component this week, Jason. I think um, predominantly just to give farmers a bit more of a guidance and steer as to what we can typically expect uh, grass to produce in terms of animal performance. And the performance that we actually get from grass, either in the form of litres of milk in a bulk tank for dairy cows or kilograms of live weight gain for growing stock is heavily influenced by a whole range of factors. So, for example, the type of grass species that we grow, um, how we actually manage the sward, the pre-grazing covers, um, whether animals are supplemented with concentrate, for example, or not, they all have a big bearing. But the most important one is actually what the what grass quality is at the given time and also then the time of year itself. So what we've done is present um, a value of grass, a maintenance plus figure for dairy. So how many litres of milk plus maintenance we can achieve from grass typically in a day. How we've actually got to that is we've looked at a number of trial data from Hillsborough uh, experiments here that have been done over the years, looking at typical grass dry matter intake under a range of conditions, under a range of different concentrate supplementation levels and different times of the year. And that has been able to tell us actually how much dry matter intake we can typically expect to get um, at each given week of the year. So we're assuming at the minute a dry matter intake for the month of May of 16 kilograms of dry matter per cow per day is typically what you can eat at this stage. In some cases that can be higher and typically with the high dry matters in grass at the minute, certainly we could achieve slightly higher than that, but 16 is a good figure to budget on. And then we're assuming a uh, maintenance value of 75 megajoules um, per day. That's based on a 650 kilogram cow. And then we're assuming uh, energy requirement to produce one liter of milk of 5.3 megajoules of energy per liter. Now, if you have heavier cows, they will have a higher maintenance requirement. Similarly, if you're put, producing higher quality milk, they'll have a higher ME energy requirement to produce per litre of milk. But all in all, those are, would be typical values um, from what we would expect for your average cow in Northern Ireland. So putting all that together, marrying that up with grass quality data, and as I say, ME sitting very strong this week at 12.2 ME, we can expect on a dairy side, a maintenance plus figure of 22.7 kilograms per cow per day, which could be achieved in good grazing conditions at this time of year. Francis, would you like to explain the methodology behind the beef calculation? Yeah, the, the beef calculation just follows a very, very similar description to what Davies uh, has done for the dairy cows. Basically, in beef cattle, we'd be estimating that the intake, potential intake, would be somewhere between 2 and 2.5% two and of their, their body live weight. So that would leave a 300-kilogram a, a 300 kilogram, 300 kilogram animal would be uh, consuming somewhere between 6 to 7 kilos of dry matter intake. Obviously, that's largely influenced by the, the weather conditions and the, and the quality of, of the grass. Obviously, as De Debbie earlier alluded to, the, the high quality of the grass at the moment and the high dry matter, you should be getting high intakes of person, you know, certainly over the two to two and a half percent of, of the body live weight. With that type of an, an intake, your maintenance, each day you've got the maintenance cost of the animal, and then what you, the, the intake that's uh, above maintenance obviously goes into growth. So at the moment, we'd be predicting for a 300 kilogram animal, around about 30, 35 megajoules of, of, of energy per, per maintenance. And then what over and above that, which is about another 40 megajoules, would go into growth. So at the moment, we'd be predicting from grass alone in around 1.1 kilos of live weight gain should be achievable from the type of quality of grass that we've got at the moment. That's obviously assuming that availability isn't an issue. If availability is an issue, so if cattle are really tight for grass, so if you're in the east and your growth is, is low and you're holding cattle tight, you might improve utilisation, but you might be dropping the potential intake. And if that's the case, performance could be slightly lower than for predicting there of the 1.1 kilos per day. Thank you, Francis. Debbie, what recent research has been conducted on concentrate supplementation at grass in dairy cows? 
I suppose looking back over the last sort of decade of, of research at Hillsborough, there's been a fair number of trials that have been undertaken to investigate different methods for feeding cows at grass. I suppose the one that's probably most relevant to today and what we're discussing in terms of M plus is a study that was, was undertaken by Andrew Deal back in 2013. And he set out a study to with 72 Holstein Frisian cows. There were about 160 days in milk and averaging about 32 litres at the start of the study. But he set out a study to really understand what we can actually expect from grass um, right the way throughout the grazing season in Northern Ireland. So when we talk about an M plus 20, uh, M plus of 22 today and our projections for this week actually is that what we should expect grass to normally deliver us and how will that change throughout the course of the season and what can we expect cows to do from that so just to, to give you a wee bit of information about the study he set out three different treatments and effectively imposed three different levels of M plus from grass. So he had a high M plus value. So in that, he was feeding cows on, on average 1.8 kilograms of, of concentrate throughout the course of the study. And their M plus value was taking an M plus of 25.2 litres at the start of the study. So um, quite a high level uh, of litres um, taken off grass. And that fell from throughout the study, just gradually fell over the course of the season down to a minimum level of 13.6 in September. Then there was a medium M plus level. So throughout the study, ended up feeding about 3.2 kilograms of concentrate per cow per day in that treatment. And that had an M plus values, which are very similar to what we have at the minute. So they started with an M plus at the end of May of 21.4 litres per cow per day, and that fell to 11.6 in September. And then they had a low M plus value. So they were supplementing more in, in that low treatment. And they were taking an M plus of 17.5 the start of May, and that fell right the way through down to 9.5 in September. And they were feeding about 4.9 kilos of concentrate on average over the course of that study. So effectively, three different levels and looking to see what cows did with different levels of M plus throughout the study. So just looking at the results of that, what we found was when you look at Andrew's results, when you look at moving from the high M plus value, so where we're expecting cows to do M plus 25 litres from grass at this time of year and actually staying above 20 right the way through to the end of July. And you compare that to the medium M plus value, so where we're starting cows on achieving uh, M plus 21 litres, on average, when we moved to that M plus from the high M plus, we got an extra 2.8 litres of milk. So in that scenario, milk yield um, actually was 19 litres per cow per day on the, on the high M plus and 21.8 on the medium M plus. Now, we did have to feed, feed a little bit more concentrate for that, but for every extra kilogram of concentrate fed and that, we got an extra two litres of milk. So then when you look at the cost effectiveness of that, our margin over concentrate per cow was actually higher for our, our medium plus, even though we were feeding more concentrate. And it was £4.22 per cow per day. That's using the milk price of 23p. And the margin over concentrate for the high M plus was £3.92 per cow per day. So because we didn't get the same animal performance at a high M plus, then they weren't making as much money. But then if you look at moving from the medium plus to the low M plus, so effectively, again, supplementing cows heavier with that low M plus value. So we we're moving from 3.2 kilos of concentrate up to 4.9 kilograms of concentrate. We've seen uh, not as big a lift in milk yield. So there was an extra two litres of milk produced. So for every extra kilogram of concentrate that we fed in that one, we got an extra 1.2 litres of milk. So we're starting to see that we're getting slightly more marginal litres from the extra feed that we're giving. And actually in that scenario, our margin over concentrate was very comparable to our medium M plus. So our margin over concentrate from the low M plus was £4.24 per cow per day. And certainly if looking at current prices, if milk prices do fall or if concentrate prices rise by 10 or 20 pounds a tonne, we'll certainly see in those scenarios that medium M plus value being, I suppose, the most profitable out of the lot. So Andrew's results very much line up with what we're seeing at the minute. An M plus of 22.7 litres per cow per day, very comparable to what Andrew's results show would end up being 
the best in terms of a good balance between cow performance and margin over concentrate is trying to go for that sort of medium M plus value. Thank you, Debbie. Francis, what recent research has been done looking at concentrate supplementation in beef animals? Concentrate supplementation in beef animals, we have had a range of studies and the studies are consistent, whether they're recent studies by many of the other PhDs or rather they're going back to work done in the 80s and early 90s by Raymond Steen. Really, from beef production systems, there is very, very limited benefit uh, feeding concentrates to pasture for growing cattle. Now, I'll just talk through a couple of studies to give examples for this. In, during Naomi Rutherford's PhD, there was autumn-born bulls went out to pasture and I got no concentrates, two kilograms of concentrates or a liberal concentrates. And if you look at daily live weight gain throughout the grazing season, you can see benefits of feeding the concentrate. But these benefits uh, disappear when if you put the animal into the house and start feeding food onto a finishing system. So although if you put concentrates into the grazing animal, you will see a benefit in live weight gain. It's the cost of that live weight gain you've got to take in. So the more energy you put in by putting concentrates in, you will automatically increase the performance. Generally, you'll increase the performance. But overall, if you look over the, the, the lifetime of the animal, that extra performance will disappear as a result of compensatory growth when the animals are all in onto a common diet to finish them. One slight contradictory to that would be anyone turning out spring-born dairy-bred calves. We have saw benefits of spring-born dairy-bred calves getting concentrates, certainly in the period after, after turnout. And that's really because the rumen isn't fully developed and the transition from the indoor concentrate side diet out onto dust grass can be challenging. So they keep them concentrates to those young calves, certainly to they get climatized to the grass is beneficial. But for larger animals, there's very little research to actually show any benefit of feeding, feeding concentrates at grass. That said, if you move to finishing animals, finishing animals, this time of the year, grass quality is really, really high. Intake potential is really, really high. So really finishing cattle, if grass supply is not an issue, you should be able to get maximum intakes and real good performance from graze grass. So the only place really where concentrates may be required would be if you're extremely lean animals, extremely possibly lean through continental animals, and you're trying to get those animals into fat class three, you may need to put some extra energy into those animals if you're trying to finish them off grass. But if doing so, you do need to meet carcass specification. There may be an advantage to feeding concentrates, but you do need to look closely at your cost to make sure that it's economically viable to do that. That's it for this episode of the Grass Check Podcast. And my thanks to Debbie McConnell and Francis Lively for joining us. Next week, we'll be joined by Grass Check beef farmer David McKinstry, who farms near Macrofelt, along with John Moore from Caffrey and Kat Hewson and Francis Lively from Avon. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. For more information, you can go to the Grass Check website www.agresearch.org slash grasscheck and the Grass Check social media channels. I'm Jason Rankin and join us the next time for the Grass Check podcast. Until then, stay safe.